Hey guys, it finally happened. I finally blew up my bike. Not really. Um, but I did spring an oil leak. Uh, so let me set this up. So maybe six weeks ago, I started noticing puffy smoke, white smoke coming out of the exhaust. Actually, John started noticing it because he rides behind me because I'm way faster than he is. He let me know that I was probably burning some oil. And I thought, yeah, not a big deal. Like whatever, you know, bikes wear. It's got 130, well, 125 hours at that point or so. Don't really care. Well, it got rapidly worse, unfortunately, to the point where the last ride that I took it out, we rode for about three hours and an hour and a half in, I poured like a half a quart of oil, which is like half or more of the oil capacity of the bike into it. So like in an hour of, of hill climbing, which admittedly is like wide open throttle stuff, it burned a shitload of oil. So it was getting bad. Um, the thing was puffing like a two stroke, obviously something that needed to be fixed. So I started thinking through like what was wrong, what, what could be causing this. And basically there's two places that you can get oil into the cylinder and, and burn it the way that I was. Um, I knew it wasn't water because one, it wasn't losing coolant. Um, it was losing oil and it just had a smell and like there's there's like a texture is not the right word. There's a look to smoke and there's a look to water in the exhaust. Um, anyway, if you've seen them both, you know what I'm talking about. So I started thinking there are oil passages or oil flow above the valves, um, but, but like not on the backs of the valves because that's the air intake passage, but like above where the valve lifters operate and there's oil flow down underneath the piston in the crank area. So there's basically two possible fixes. One is change what's called the valve stem seals, which are seals around the stem of the valve where it pokes up into where there's oil. The other one is to change the piston rings, which are what keep the compression on top of the piston and the oil on the bottom of the piston or underneath it in the crank area. Obviously changing the piston rings is a much harder thing to do. So I sort of hoped that it was the valve stem seals and I dove in and changed those and it didn't work. Actually, when I started it up after changing the valve stem seals, it was actually sucking in more oil than it was when I started. I used aftermarket Pro X valve stem seals to do the intake valves and then OEM valve stem seals for the exhaust valves. They are not the same. Um, exhaust valves are smaller than intake valves on this bike. So it's there's a possibility that's what caused the failure of the valve stem seal part of the job. I filmed a whole bunch of stuff around it and then like took it out and it didn't work. So that, that whole <laughs> that whole effort was a bust. So I started over, thus this intro with some like background knowledge. What I decided was it was either those two intake valve stem seals that were the Pro X brand that I wasn't so sure were actually good or it was the piston rings. And I decided to do a three part video, show you guys how to do the diagnostic properly on the bike, which I skipped the first time around and then show you how to change the valve stem seals because I had to get back in and do that again anyway. And then show you how to change the piston rings for those of you that are unfortunate enough to have to go that far into the process. Now, None of this is that complex. You will need a special tool to do the valve stems. It's helpful if you have a special tool to reset the piston inside the cylinder. Um, you've got to compress the rings in kind of a complicated way. We'll show you that in the video, but it's really not that complex to do overall. It's the deepest I've ever been in this particular bike. And, um, you know, I have a service manual, but I didn't need it that much. It's pretty intuitive. Like you take stuff off, you put it back on. I mostly use the service manual for torque specs and only for like the head bolts, um, which were just about the only bolts I actually specifically Care about like a detailed torque. Um, other than that, I really encourage you to, to try this. You'll save yourselves a fortune. If you're mechanically inclined, you shouldn't have too much trouble getting through this process. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to do something called a leak down test. Basically, test where you're losing compression. If you are, part of that might be around the piston rings. And if that's the case, then it'll indicate that the piston rings are not only where you're losing compression, but likely also where you're sucking up oil. Okay. Depending on the results of the leak down testing, you can then make some assumptions about whether it's the valve stem seals that are causing you to burn oil or the piston rings. You can skip to the appropriate video for the how to or whatever repair it is you're about to do. So if it's the valve stem seals, your leak down test will come back good, meaning you won't have any loss of compression. And then if you're still burning oil, you'll know it's probably the valve stem seals. That'll be part two of this series. If your leak down test fails at the compression rings or the piston rings, then you'll jump to part three of this series and we'll show you how to change those piston rings. Um, if you wanna see the whole thing, by all means, all the links are down in the description to the other parts of this video. Please, when you're putting things back together, make sure the bike has oil. Um, make sure that you turn it over by hand before you start cranking it to make sure you didn't cause interference by getting the timing wrong. Make sure your bike has coolant and of course, make sure you put all the parts back on that you took off. General basic mechanic stuff. Let's get started, guys. Okay, so the bike's warmed up. It's puffing smoke as bad as ever. Like I'm surprised how 
fast this is getting bad. But anyway, um, what we're gonna do, the bike's hot like it needs to be. We're gonna pull the tank off so everything's loose. So I'm gonna pop the, um, the electrical cable and the fuel, the fuel line and we can lift this out of the way. Recommend that you prep as much as possible before you get the bike hot so that you can then go quickly. Gonna pull the spark plug wire. You have to bring the piston to, up to TDC. The easiest way to do that is with the little guide mark on the cam sprocket. So I'm gonna pop the valve cover so that I can see the cam sprocket. This little dot on the cam sprocket needs to be up in the middle of this bracket that holds the cam sprocket in place. To rotate the engine with um, the cover off, the easy thing to do is stick screwdrivers in the holes of the cam sprocket and then use a lever between them and you can rotate the engine around this way. Um, it takes a little bit of force, but if you're careful with it, um, it's not too bad. So you can get everything lined up like this. Next, we're gonna pull the spark plug because this is where the tool is gonna go. So you can see how much oil on the spark plug it's definitely getting oil in from somewhere okay uh, pistons at TDC you can put a screwdriver in the hole you should tap the piston right away if you have to reach very far in the pistons not at TDC the mark on the cam chain will line up at a few different piston positions you want TDC on the compression stroke so anyway we've got it there now I'm gonna this is the line for the compression tester or the leak down tester so I'm gonna thread that into the spark plug hole it doesn't have to be real tight it's got o-rings I'm gonna connect that to the uh, device. Connect my inlet air side. In this case, I've got about 90 PSI on my compressor. These two gauges are what you're gonna look at. This one, this one shows the inlet pressure. That's how much is coming off your compressor. This one shows the pressure that your um, system is holding, that your engine is holding. Ideally, you'd want them to be this to be within 15% of the inlet pressure. Um, if it's greater than that, you've got a problem. And then we're gonna, if that's the case, we're gonna listen for where it's leaking out to figure out where the problem is. So I'm gonna feed in inlet pressure and see they start to rise together. And we're gonna go pretty high because we wanna get a good measurement. So I've got about 85 or so PSI inlet and I've got, well, let's see what do I have. 82, four, six, eight, 90. I've got 86 on there and I'm reading 79, 78. Um, so I'm eight off, eight of 80, that's about 10% difference, which isn't bad actually. It's interesting, I had a much bigger gap the first time I tried this, but I can hear some leaking out. So I'm gonna try to figure out where. Yeah, I hear it leaking down in the bottom side of the engine. So the other side of the valve cover's off, that goes all the way down to the crank because the cam chain's gotta feed all the way down and I hear it bubbling in the oil down there pretty clearly. So in this case, I think something's wrong with the piston rings. I know 10% is like inside spec, but I've measured it. I measured it before and it was like 20% off. Doing it here again on video as a second check. I think I'm still gonna open it. I mean, I'm clearly still burning oil. In my case, I've already changed the valve stem seals by the time I got to this point in the process. I'm showing you guys how to do the diagnosis. I'm pretty sure that in my case, I've got something wrong with the piston. So I am going to pull the piston or the head and cylinder and check. The so that's a leak down test in a hurry. There's kind of more nuance to it. You can hunt down different places where the air might be coming out. You can figure out different differentials between the input pressure and what you're getting out of the cylinder. But that's the gist of it. Um, you guys can there's instructions that come with it typically. So you guys can follow those. In my case, I've done it twice now, once on camera and once before to sort of figure out what was going on. The first time I had a pretty big differential and I heard a lot of air flowing into the crank underneath. You can hear it bubbling in like the oil sump down in the bottom. This time I only had, I had like 10% differential, which should be okay, but I'm clearly sucking in oil. I've already changed the um, valve stem seals and I'm pretty sure something's up with the piston. So I'm gonna dive back into it. And in the third video in this series, so part this is part one, right? How do you diagnose this problem of, of consuming oil? Part two is how do you change the valve stem seals? And part three, which we're gonna get to next is, or which I, next in my timeline is gonna be part three, which is how to check the piston and the rings and the cylinder for damage or wear and replace parts down in there as necessary. So I'm gonna dive into that um, and we'll figure out what's going on. Before I let you guys move on to the next segment, which is where you're gonna really start to solve your problem, I want to really quickly pitch these chin mounts that we make. We designed these chin mounts custom for each of the helmets that we run. We're now up to like 60 models, I think, 65 models, something like that. At this point and growing fast, we add a couple a month. 
um, but they're, they're really specifically designed for every helmet, so they perfectly fit the chin guard. Tons of amazing features, but check those out. Link in the description. I will also put the link in the description to parts two and three of this video. Part two is valve stem seal changing. Part three is checking out the piston and rings for oil leaks um, that, that might be causing oil burn. Thanks a ton for coming on this journey with me, guys. I will see you in part two.